Hello, my name is Joshua Schulz, and today I'll be presenting my capstone project, the indoor greenhouse, uh, for my electrical capstone course, uh, LEC 10145. Uh, I'm currently studying at Mohawk College for electrical engineering technology, and I've been studying in this field for about three and a half years now. So you might be wondering what actually is the indoor greenhouse project, and it is a closed environment which can be controlled and tuned for the optimal growth of specific plants. Uh, so this enclosure has both soil moisture and temperature sensors sending data back to the Arduino. Uh, the system is currently designed to run in both open loop and closed loop. Uh, so you can choose and you can actually specifically choose whether you want to do this for turning on, off or both on and off uh, a fan or the pump. So the system is highly customizable that way. Uh, the garden can be controlled through an LCD and keypad on the front panel, but you can also uh, connect into the remote HMI uh, over the local area network. Now you may be wondering how is this garden uh, better than the ones that are already out there? And it really comes down to customizability, I think. Uh, this garden has so many ways that it can be configured uh, with open loop and closed loop control. Uh, for example, you can have closed loop to turn on the watering and closed loop to turn off the watering. So you could say uh, turn on the watering when you get a soil moisture of 70%, turn it off when it reaches 90, because that's a pretty good value to have. Um, or you could just do a uh, closed loop to turn on the water, but then open loop to turn it off. So you can say, okay, when it drops to 70% soil moisture, just run the pump for three seconds. I don't care what the soil moisture changes to, I just want it to run for three seconds. And you can do that as well. There's just so many different options. Um, another thing that I also have in this project is the HMI interface, which I think is really important. Uh, and this HMI interface can be accessed over the local area network, and uh, it can also be accessed outside of the network if you port forward it, which is really powerful as well. And this allows you to turn on and off the lights, the fan, the pump, and you can also see the soil moisture and uh, temperature plotted over time. So you can, you know, see trends happening over time. And now we come to the slide on what was learned throughout this whole project. And there's definitely a lot of things I learned. I'm trying to narrow them down a bit. Uh, and one of the biggest things that took me the longest amount of time to decide was what software am I going to use for the HMI interface? Uh, I started out with LabVIEW. Uh, that was just not customizable enough for me, and it also wasn't going to work with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, then I went to processing, because I thought that was going to be good, and I wanted to build my entire HMI from scratch. And later down the line, I decided that that wasn't such a great idea, but processing was my idea for that. It wasn't going to run properly again on the Raspberry Pi, so uh, that was cut uh, again, and I decided to go with Python, because that was going to work on the Pi as well. But then I just started running into all these issues. I actually started programming a little bit, and uh, I ended up running into a bunch of problems with that, with displaying real-time data, because it was only updating the window whenever you clicked a button, because it was an events-based uh, interface. So I ended up going with uh, Node-RED, which really supplied exactly what I needed, and it actually added the ability for me to do the uh, networking, basically, so you can access the HMI over the network, and I really like that now, and I can't see myself ever going back from that. Another thing that I learned which was really important was checking things with a digital meter. I mean, it sounds dumb to say, but uh, sometimes you just don't think of it when you're developing something. Uh, and I thought for sure I had messed something up in my code. But double check things with the meter, because um, I had issues with when I added a relay board into my project. It was drawing too much current and actually it pulled my bus voltage down and all my analog readings went way off. They were super inaccurate. And I was not really sure what was going on at first, but as soon as I checked with the digital meter, I knew exactly what was going on and I was able to diagnose the problem very quickly and find a solution. So I did a lot of programming in this project. It was very heavy on programming and I was okay with that because that's kind of the approach or the direction I wanted to go. Um, but I definitely developed a lot of different methods for solving bugs. Uh, usually they were silly ones, so I was able to fix them really quickly. Uh, but for the more tricky ones, uh, talking to peers about uh, different problems and just asking and seeing, you know, if they came across something similar was very helpful as well. Because sometimes we did run into similar issues or they had advice for me. And that was very great to be able to help each other out. 
Um, but then also just researching online, searching through forums for people who had similar issues was something I did a lot of. One thing I ended up having to learn the hard way was learning to double check connections, not only with the schematics I made, but with the data sheets. Because I actually made a mistake in one of my schematics. Uh, there was a terminal called VCC and a terminal called JDVCC. These are on the relay board. Uh, I needed to apply 12 volts to the relay board to supply current to it for the coils. I ended up shorting 12 volts onto my 5 volt bus. I burnt out my Arduino and my LCD. Uh, I was able to replace the parts very promptly, so that was good. But double check connections not only with the schematics, but double check the data sheets too. Okay, so if we take a look at the drawings over here, uh, you can see that uh, we've got our two different sensors here, our uh, temperature sensors and our moisture sensors, and those are connected up into analog pins here. Uh, I also have the Raspberry Pi here, and this is actually connected to the uh, local area network uh, wirelessly. And uh, then from there, you can connect your devices uh, to that as well to access the HMI. Um, we've got the LCD screen right here um, with just, you know, some minor circuitry to adjust for the current for the uh, LED backlight and the contrast for the display. Uh, if we take a look at the next drawing here, we've got the Arduino again, and we have the keypad interface um, connecting into that. And we've got our relay board right here. Uh, we've got the water limit switch right here. This is actually in the bottom of the tank. So when the water gets too low, it will lock out the pump. So the pump will not run uh, when the water is too low because we don't want to burn it out. Uh, so that is that. And you can see here, this is fed from the next page. So if we go to the next page here, you can see that's being fed from these points right here. Uh, the 12 volt supply right here. And then we have all of our 12 volt devices uh, being fed through these contacts right here. So we can control them. Uh, we've got four different lights that we can actually all be individually controlled. And we have a 12 volt fan and a 12 volt pump right here. Uh, and the fan is located on the top of the enclosure. We should be able to see that in a second. But here is an overall block diagram of the whole system. Again, we have our temperature and moisture sensors right here, the keypad. These all feed in to the Arduino. Um, and also the water limit switch feeds into the Arduino. Raspberry Pi is both an input and an output because it actually displays data. And you can also control the fan. You can control the uh, pump and the LED lights all from the uh, Raspberry Pi HMI. And again, connected to the local area network and you can connect with your smartphone or a desktop PC, whatever you wanna do. Uh, and then we've got the LCD module right here and the external 12 volt supply. And I think that just about covers everything uh, for the block diagram. Here's the overall layout of the entire garden, uh, which will hopefully give you a better understanding of what's going on here. Uh, and again, you can see here, uh, circulation fan located on the top. We've got our lights located at the top as well. Uh, it's actually pretty busy on the roof of this enclosure. We've got the temperature sensors kind of mounted somewhere on the roof there as well to uh, get temperature readings. And then we've got uh, the water pipe, which is feeding from the water tank. And our soil moisture probes also, uh, along with the soil and the plants. Uh, we've got the keypad and the LCD right here. And then we've got the relay board Arduino. Raspberry Pi is not actually shown in here. Uh, I'll have to update that. Um, and also the 12 volt power supply is here as well. And then we've got the limit switch uh, down on the bottom of the tank. Again, when this little float goes down, uh, it will tell the Arduino, hey, we're too low on water. Don't run the pump anymore because there isn't enough water in the tank. And I think that's just about it. So the code behind this product is really what makes the whole thing tick. Uh, a majority of it is for the Arduino, so it's a lot of C++. And uh, since I spent so much time developing the programming for this project, I actually wanted to make sure that I could do it remotely as well, and that was actually exactly what I did. I did spend a bunch of time uh, working on the project remotely over just a program like Putty or something and just connecting to the Raspberry Pi via SSH or something. And I could actually compile and upload to the Arduino right from the Raspberry Pi, uh, which was great. Um, so I did that a lot. 
I also spend a lot of time uh, organizing code since I have a lot of I.O. I have keypad, I have LCD, I had uh, the relay board. So there was a lot of things to manage. So a lot of time was spent uh, working on the code for the Arduino for sure. Uh, from the Arduino to the uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, the communication was over serial. Uh, and it would go to the Node-RED interface uh, on the Raspberry Pi, which is more of like a data flow uh, type of programming. And this could also be done over the local area network, which was great. Uh, so I did a bunch of that work remotely as well, just from my laptop. I wasn't even at home and I was able to work on that, which was great. Uh, but let's quickly jump over to the uh, jump over to the code and we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like. OK, so now that I've uh, connected into the Raspberry Pi, we can run this program. Uh, and we can well we can run that command and you can see here there is quite a bit of code uh, so I've got things organized like right here you can see my pin declarations uh, so all the different names or aliases that I gave to the uh, pin numbers which makes it easier to change them later on which I actually did have to do so I was very grateful that I did that uh, we've got some variables which I define initially so I, none of the outputs are on initially uh, and then there's all of the uh, functions so this is uh, right here at the very top we've got a LCD print so basically I can feed this function two different strings and it will print it on the LCD and it actually prints the the, uh, the line uh, that I want it to plus an entire blank uh, it basically clears the rest of the screen uh, right here we have the keypad LCD update function which is basically my entire menu navigation system this thing I'm not going to go into super detail on this but basically uh, it just changes the menu index number so depending on uh, where you are like if you press one and then you press two it knows that uh, in that case you'd be going to uh, I don't even know I'm not going to try uh, to go through the whole thing uh, you'd probably end up in uh, in the moisture uh, sensor menu somewhere up here uh, but anyways, we're not going to waste too much time on that. And basically, based off of that menu index number, it prints whatever it needs to print to the LCD screen. So that's how that sort of works. Uh, we can keep going down here. This is the serial communications uh, function right here. Um, we also have just some random functions here. Here's our uh, setup function, again, defining a bunch of pins, input or output. I have to write all of the relay outputs as being high initially because that actually means the output is off. Reverse logic. Uh, and then reading a bunch of sensors here. You can see I'm reading the temperature and moisture. And then here I'm scaling the data. This is for the lamps on and off. This is more for the menu. So uh, in the menu interface, you can tell whether the lamp is on or off. Um, again, this is sending for sending to the, uh, to the HMI. Uh, one or zero is the fan running or is it not? Um, again, more serial data. This is serial print line. So this is now sending packets basically. So I send to the HMI low water and then I send what the value is. And when the HMI sees uh, a square bracket like this, low water and square brackets, it knows it's receiving data. So that's how that works. Same thing for all of these down here. Uh, a bunch of alarm stuff. I'm not going to go too much into detail. These are um, how to start and stop watering based off of different parameters in the system. Uh, again, 200 millisecond um, delay. So it only scans every 200 milliseconds. Um, and here, parameters uh, for changing for the watering time and stuff. And there's also a screensaver. So if you don't touch the keypad for a while, it will scroll through a bunch of different a bunch of different readings, you know, it will show the temperature, moisture, and it will just kind of scroll through all these different screens. Let's quickly jump over to Node Red. I don't know how much time I have left, but I'm hoping to quickly go over that as well. And this is the Node Red page right here. Uh, as you can see, I'm connected over the network. Uh, you can see that I receive data from the Arduino uh, right here. And then basically from here, I can read in what type of data is it? Is it low water? Is it average temp? You can see these square brackets. Uh, things which indicate again that the uh, HMI is receiving data. I then sort that into uh, whatever it is, whatever data it's for. If it's water low, then I know here this thing is actually a change. So basically it takes the uh, water low thing and it's if it's water low one, then I can write the text low water level on the screen. 
and if it's water level uh, or water low uh, zero, then I can write water levels good uh, to the uh, HMI. So that's that's a great thing to have as well. Um, and yeah, that's basically how that works. And then we've got all of our different buttons from the HMI, which send back to the uh, Arduino. I can actually quickly uh, jump over to the HMI. Um, I'm still fixing the temperature sensor. Uh, I know exactly what that is. I can turn uh, lamps on and off. I could turn the fan on or I could turn it off. You can see how it's updating here. Again, these are going to be text eventually. Right now, they're just uh, one or zero. Um, but you can see that they do, uh, in fact, work. But I think we're going to end things off uh, right here because uh, we're running low on time. So thank you for your time. Uh, I hope this was informative and that you enjoyed it. And thanks for listening to my presentation.